Hi, I'm Jane M. Mason from Watching Paint Dry, LLC. And in this mini demo, we're gonna talk about flowers. And the world of flowers is so vast. We're just gonna take a tiny little look at some of the flowers. As you begin to think about painting flowers in watercolor, which it's so much fun, you need to study the flowers. And please don't go directly from photographs. Really have some flowers in your hand. As you can see from this beautiful flower that we have right here, notice on the back of it, there's all these lovely petals that hold. It's a frame that holds the actual petals as they're blooming. And it's wonderful in a painting to get the backs of some flowers so you can see all this detail. And it also allows you to think about how is each petal connected to the bloom head. As we turn it around and can look at it this way, we can also see this beautiful center section. It's surrounded by these lovely yellow dots. I think that might be part of the pollen. And then these petals, you can see, they're each shaped a little bit where they go down narrower at the center and they're wider at the top. It's easy to examine a flower when you're holding it in your hand. It's very difficult to be able to rotate it and to think about it, to look about how the veins go up the flower. Even on some of these, you can see too that the edges are not completely rounded. Some of them have been eaten away or dried away. Look as we look through this, you can see that you can actually see through the petals. So they're not 100% dense all the time. Examining it in your hand, there's nothing like it for you to learn about the flower, even the sturdiness of this stem. Some flowers have more floppy stems. This one has a very stiff stem, which is wonderful as you think about if it's hanging out over the edge of a vase, you know this one can stand out. Where a tulip, for example, would bend, would arc over the edge of the vase. You don't know this until you actually have the flowers in your hand. Here we have another zinnia. It's a beautiful orange zinnia. These I picked a few hours ago, so they are, they're quite a bit drier now than they would have been if they were fresh. And again, notice that these in the center here, we now have all these little blooms coming from the center too. Not all these edges are completely smooth and round. Some of them look like they have either been bitten or just weren't formed perfectly in the beginning. This head is not quite as open. We're in the fall, so some of the blooms, they don't have enough heat, enough warmth, enough sunshine to open completely. So it's wonderful too to draw buds when you're looking at your flowers. So this is more of a bud head. And you can see that there's like a little darkness around the edge. There's nothing like examining the flowers to see what's really happening. This beautiful set of things that look almost like orchids, uh, the name of it is a toad lily, and they come in lots of different colorations, but they're absolutely gorgeous. You can see that each of these little petals has a dotted pattern on it. We're gonna take a minute now, and we're gonna think about how we would draw this toad lily. I'm gonna put one right on the edge of my paper so you can see it. I'm drawing with a watercolor pencil that is a magenta color. If I were doing this flower on my own, I would draw with a much lighter pencil. But I think for you to be able to see it, drawing with this magenta pencil will be better. So as you think about your flower, think about, I do a lot of counting. I count maybe, oh look, there would be three buds, maybe four buds on this stem. There would be one, two, three, four, five, six petals coming off of this flower. There in the center, there's a center, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six pistols coming off of the center too. So as I'm gonna draw this flower, I'll start with drawing the stem, and I'll just draw it like, well, here, and here, and this is where I'm gonna draw the flower head. It comes to a kind of squarish back at the end. It comes to, then the petals come out. I'm gonna draw this petal coming out this way so we can see it a little bit better. So that's one, that's two, that's three. Again, I'm gonna twist this one around so we can see it a little bit better. It's not exactly how it came out, but that's what we're gonna look at. One, two, that one's too big. Three, four, five, whoops, too wide. Uh, this one I'm gonna draw right like this. There we go, have that one come down here. 
And this one I might put down like this. That'll be better. So I'll do one, two, three, four. Let's do five, six. Okay. And I'm going to put the buds out this side just to give us a little bit more uh, something going on over here. Here's one bud and here's another bud. There's another little bit of the stem coming off and another bit of the stem coming off. Okay. I'm going to use a small round brush and on this, because the petals look almost like they're smeared and they're there you you can see there's dots on two different sides um, there's almost a center line and then dots on two different sides so I think what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to make sure that the center is not wet on the dots on both sides I'm going to come out that had too much blue in it I'm going to use the water on both sides not in the middle here I'm going to take where I made that line I didn't like and I'm going to kind of race it with my brush. Now, I've never painted this flower before so this will be kind of an experiment that we're working on together. But I'm going to take a color that I think is pretty close to it. There we go. Between the two of those I think that's about right. And I'm going to add dots and we'll see if we like it. Because it's wet, the dots are running a little bit, which is what I wanted. This one's going to need to be a teeny bit wetter. I'm going to take another round brush. Sometimes I do paint <laughs> with one brush in one hand and one brush in another hand if I think I have to go super fast. I don't think I have to go super fast this time, so I think I'll trade off my brushes. That might have been a little bit wetter than I wanted. And the backs of them are very, very light colored. So I'll just bring, this is the back, I'll just bring a little, I'll borrow a little bit of the paint from the last two dots and just kind of bring it down the back. This petal would be flipped over so we would see the back of it. The same way with this one. This ran too much so it was too wet. We'll try one more petal here. Since I know that one was too wet, I'm going to paint this and while I'm putting this brush down, I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to pause for a second. I might take a green watercolor pencil and add a little green here while I'm making, letting that dry. And you kind of have to go by your instinct on how, how long you think it should dry and I think that's just about right. Yeah, it's not as wet as this and I had, it was a little bit wider than on the first petal. So, and luckily I have the flower in front of me. Again, this is one of the reasons why it's so good to have the flower actually in your hand than trying to work from memory. And there's little kind of bubbly things, curious kind of bubbly things at the bottom here. Okay, so that shows you how I do three of the different petals. We, ha we would have six, so those three, then I'd have this one, I'd have this one, and I'd have this one. <clears throat> In addition, I'll do these little buds. I'm not painting them smoothly because they, I'll show you in a minute, I want to have a little bit of variation in the color and I want to bring a little of the color down, that was too much there, bring a little of the color down. So as I bring the green up, it mixes with it and do you see when it mixes you get a kind of a purple and a green together? That's too emerald, I'm going to take, shoot.
There we go. I can bring a little of the green into here where I left that spot. the green up into here. So as you can see, that's how I get started painting this beautiful, beautiful um, flower that looks almost like an orchid. And um, uh, it's just, it's so much fun to try to mimic these beautiful colors and patterns in nature. You can see that this green is flowing in here. And as you can see from the little tiny buds, that's exactly what it looks like. The green flows into the purple. So this would be a good practice. And then I could figure out the exact wetness I would need to get this beautiful modeled um, uh, dottiness on the petals. But that's how you'd start painting one of these beautiful flowers. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jane and Mason at Watching Paint Dry, LLC.